through how you can interpret your regression output from Excel. On the screen is my data in Excel. Column A has my total observations. I have 50 of them. Column B has my independent variable, which is income. And in column C is my dependent variable, which is PCE. So let us start by going to tax bar where you have data. Maneuver to the extreme right and click on data analysis. Make sure you have this add in button in your Excel. The data analysis box opens up and you have this. Regression is already indicated, so just click OK. In the regression dialog box, we need to impute the range for the dependent variable, impute the range for the independent variable. So let's just start with the dependent variable. Go back to where PCE is, press down your control key, and use your down arrow to cover the entire range to 2009. So my range for the dependent variable is C1 to C51. Click on the input X range for you to impute the range for your independent variable. I'm going to income now in my cell B1. I press down my shift key and I use the down arrow key to maneuver to 2009. So the range for income is B51 to B1 to B51. I check the label box. I check the confidence interval box. For the output range, I need to indicate to Excel where to put my output once the analysis have been done. So I'm going to click cell E4. So I'm telling Excel, put the regression output in cell E4. Click OK. So here is my regression output. Let me increase it to make it clearer. So here's the regression output one more time. In Excel, the output is divided into two components. We have regression statistics in the upper part. And the lower part, you have ANOVA. ANOVA simply means analysis of variance. So let me begin by explaining the composition of the regression statistics. The R squared captures the total variation in your dependent variable that are explained by your independent variable. So the higher your R squared, the better your model and the better the predictive power of your independent variables. The adjusted R squared will reduce the more independent variables you add to your model. And if K is not taken, it can become a negative figure if you have too many independent variables. The standard error here simply means the standard error of the regression. And remember, I said I have 50 observations. It is basically the sample size. So observations here captures my entire sample size. I've moved on now to the lower part of the table where you can see ANOVA. Remember, ANOVA simply means analysis or variance. Under ANOVA, ANOVA table is divided into two components, regression and residual. All the figures for regression are those ones explained within the model, and those for the residuals are those ones explained outside the model. For the degree of freedom, it is computed for the regression as K minus 1. K equals number of restrictions you have placed on your model. And what do I mean by that? I have two restrictions I place on this model, the intercept and income. So what makes up your number of um, restrictions is simply the total explanatory variable plus your intercept. So K minus one gives me the degree of freedom for the regression. While the degree of freedom for the residual is computed as N minus K, N equals number of observations. So 50 minus 2 gives me 48. The sum of square residuals is simply a composition of the explained sum of squares, which is the model sum of squares, and the unexplained sum of squares. So by the time you add these two together, you have what we call total sum of square residuals. The mean sum of square is simply by dividing the sum of square residuals with their respective degree of freedom. The F statistics here captures the joint significance of your independent variable. The higher this figure, the better your model. It simply tells you that your independent variables can significantly predict your dependent variable. The significance here, F here, simply means the prop value of the F statistics. The lower the prop value, the better your model. Here, the coefficients are simply the estimates of your intercepts and slope coefficients. 
and the signs of the coefficients here tells you the direction of the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. Next, I explain the standard error. The standard error shows how much deviation occurs from predicting the slope coefficient. It tells you how much you have deviated from predicting the slope coefficient. The t-statistics also measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. T-statistics captures the total number of standard errors that the coefficient is different from zero, and it can be computed by dividing the coefficient by a standard error. Next, I move on to the probability value of the t-statistics. The lower the probability value, the better your likelihood or chances or evidence for rejecting the null hypothesis. You can see here lower and upper bound. These are simply the 95% confidence interval. If your coefficient is significant, it will definitely fall within this 95% confidence interval. So in brief, this is how you can interpret your regression outputs as generated by the Excel package. I will wrap up this tutorial by just briefly highlighting what we have done so far today. Under the regression outputs using Excel, it is divided into two components. The upper part is for the regression statistics, the lower part is for the ANOVA. For the regression statistics, you have the R squared, which captures variation in the dependent variable and explained by independent variable. For your adjusted R squared, it reduces the more explanatory variables you add to the model. The standard error is just the standard error of the regression observations as simply the sample size. For ANOVA, the degree of freedom is calculated as K minus 1 for the model and N minus K for the residuals. The sum of square residuals has two components, the regression sum of squares and the residual sum of squares. The F statistics will tell you how jointly significant your independent variables are in explaining the dependent variable. The higher this figure, the better for your model. The, the prop value of the F statistics also indicates the significance of the F value. The lower the prop value, the better your model. Coefficients are simply the estimates for both the intercept and the slope coefficients. The standard error is the standard deviation for the slope coefficients. It shows how much deviation occurs from predicting the slope estimate. The T statistics here measures the number of standard errors that the coefficient is from zero. The prop value here tells you the smallest evidence that you have to reject the null hypothesis. Lastly, the 95% confidence interval will always contain the slope coefficient if that coefficient is significant. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Visit our website and our blog post for more detailed tutorials.